Good evening. God bless you tonight on this beautiful Monday evening. The storms have passed, at least here in Christiansburg, and we've got some sun shining. I, I hope you have some sun shining where you're at today and that you've got, gotten to get out and, and get a little fresh air today. I know being locked up in the house sometimes, uh, uh, now it's become we have to make ourselves actually go out. <laughs> but um, it's a blessing. Um, the more I, I think about this and the more I, I dwell on what we um, are accomplishing uh, through Jesus Christ, of course, um, I believe God is using this. Um, as Pastor said eight, uh, in Romans 8, you know, it, all things, all things work together. Um, and I'm just thankful that um, we can be a part of that working the things together. Um, tonight, I would just want to share a little bit with you. Um, I woke up this morning with this verse on my heart. Um, it was actually, um, if I could say it was in my mind, it was almost like it was uh, spoken to me. It was that that heavy or, or that loud or that emphasized when I got up this morning. Um, the word was found in Isaiah. I actually had to look up where it was um, exactly. Um, it's found in Isaiah 58 and uh, it's the, uh, the last part of verse 12. And it says this, And thou shalt be called, Now that, those parts weren't in my dream, but this is not in my dream, but when I woke up, this is what I heard. The repair of the breach. Now, I just want to tell you that I love that phrase. The repair of the breach. I think I have always been... Um, I always wanted to be the peacemaker. I always wanted to make things right. I always wanted to um, to stand in the gap, if you would, and 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 bring things together. And when I heard that today, that just kind of settled in my spirit today. And it said, "The repair of the breach, the restore of the paths to dwell in." Glory be to God. The repair of the breach. So when I looked up the word breach today. I think we can all give our own definition. We know what a breach is. It's a break in something or a gap or um, something that has been separated. And when I, when I heard the word gap, um, of course I had to go to Ezekiel. And, um, but before I even read that, I, I just thought of what we're in right now. We're in a gap. We're in, we're in a break of time. We're in a, in a break of a situation. We have been rolling with this world as the world rolls, and we have been doing the things that we thought we were supposed to be doing, and, and um, taking care of the things that we are to be taking care of, and all of a sudden, there's this break. There's this, there's this gap, and we no longer can do the things that we used to do, and so I praise the Lord that, that people have come together to stand in this gap, and um, I'll read what Ezekiel says now, of course. It says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. And I should not destroy it, but I found none. But you see, I believe that we are the ones that are standing in the gap at this time. We're the ones that I believe during the situation that we are turning this, this bad and God is using us for this, this good because we can get the word out. I mean, I wouldn't have been here on a Monday night giving you something that the Lord gave me. I would just have gobbled it up and, and took it to heart and said, oh Lord, thank you for that. But you know what the Lord is showing us to do? He's showing us that what he gives us, he's telling us that he wants us to stand in the gap, to give out the words, to present ourselves that living sacrifice for him, glory to God, that on a daily basis, not just when you're told to do something, but when you go out, you have that word of Jesus Christ living within you. And that word can stand in the gap for those people that are around us and especially for this situation when people are grasping at straws wondering what is next 
I'm going to tell you what is next. The church is next. We're next on the scene, church. We're the ones that have the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That message on Sunday, Pastor, was amazing. Yes, Christ crucified, but rather he's risen. He's alive. He's working within us. Hallelujah. To stand in the gap and to be that intercession for us and for those that are lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I bless the, my, <laughs> the name of the Lord forever because he is so rich and so precious in my life today. So as I went through that and I read about what the gap is and about what we were doing, I want to go back to you and, and, and I believe that second part is the restore of the path to dwell in. <sighs> to dwell. Oh, hallelujah. We've been dwelling a lot. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my house is no longer a dog house. They used to keep the, um, spend more time here, I think, than I did. But now, thank God, um, I'm spending a little more time in my dwelling. Um, I'm dwelling with my family. I'm dwelling with the people that we love. We're, we're staying in communication. And, and we're finding that, that residency. And as I read in Revelation... Uh, chapter 3 and 20, it says, Jesus stands at the door. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open that door, I don't know about you, but this is the dwelling that I'm talking about. This is the place of dwelling. It says, And hears my voice and open the door. I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Glory be to God. I want you to know, church, that Jesus is standing at our dwelling. Jesus, the very living word of God, is standing at our dwelling and knocking and say, hey, let, let me come in. Let me come in. Glory be to God. There's another verse of scripture that has the word dwell in it, and I found it today, and it's found in uh, Colossians chapter 3. And verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. That word of Christ. Do you know that word is actually Christ? Glory be to God. I mean, we can go to John and, and it says it plainly. Uh, we can go to John 1 and 1 and it says, In the beginning, the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And you skip down to verse 14 and it says it right here. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. That's our Jesus. That's the word of God. I'm here to tell you a little story before not going to be long tonight, but I read this story about a pastor or an evangelist that had gone out and he was going to hold a revival. And instead of getting a hotel, the hotels were booked. And, and uh, in my, my years of ministry, we have run into that. Uh, we always call it, well, there must be a fiddler's convention in the area. Uh, we forgot to book our room and we had to drive hundreds and hundreds of miles to, to find a room. Or if it wasn't 100 miles, we'd drive 30 and, and found a place that we probably shouldn't have even stayed in. But we did. <laughs> God's grace is sufficient. Glory be to God. He keeps us always. But this particular evangelist, he was looking um, for a place and the pastor said, well, no, I, what I want you to do is I have a family that I want you to dwell with. I have a family that, that will put you up for the week. And so he was receptive and he said, okay. And so he went to this family and they opened the door and they received him and they showed him his room and they showed him where the kitchen was. And they showed him where his bathroom would be. And he took up residency there. He dwelled there for a week. The problem was that the very house that he was dwelling in treated him like a visitor. Once he got there, they didn't even give him the time of day. They left him alone. Even if he would ask them questions, it was like they didn't even hear him. And if 
he would speak to them. They would just almost ignore him. I want to ask you a question today. That word dwell, if we go back to that first part of the scripture, that we shall be a repair of the breach. And I think I touched on that briefly, how we're in the gap right now. Glory be to God. God is helping us to be the one standing in the gap. But look at the second part of this. The restore of the paths to dwell in. You see, I believe right now Jesus is also during, doing a work in us. That there may be a path in us. That maybe that very word of God, hallelujah, needs to find a deeper dwelling place. You see, that man, that evangelist that was looking for a place to stay, looking for a place to dwell, was only treated like a visitor. But Jesus Christ, the very word of God, wants to dwell in us, wants to, if you will, take up residency in us, permanent residency in us. Glory be to God. He wants to live in us and dwell in us richly. Church, my question tonight is, is the word of God in us just a visitor? Do we just pick up the word in, in time of crisis and find, oh yes, this is where I put it, or, or where was that, or, or how, does, how does that even fit in my life? Church, if Christ dwells in us and takes up his residency, glory be to God, we can find ourselves tripping over the very word of God. We can find it so close that word after word finds its dwelling within us and it'll bubble up inside of us and we're able to apply that word daily. We're able to apply the very communion. You see, when we go back to, to Revelation, it says that he will sup with us hallelujah to come in and will sup with us that means he will share a very covenant of jesus christ with us do you understand that's that's like communion i don't know about you church but i have been taking communion sometimes i well, i try to take it as often as possible the word says, as oft as ye do this, hallelujah, he's going to show up. He's going to commune with us, glory be to God. And as I remember what he did for me, as I remember how he went to that cross, that broken body went to that cross, and that very blood of Jesus was my remission for my sins, that he took that gladly upon himself. As I remember that daily, how can I not help but have that permanent resident dwell within me daily? Oh, hallelujah. Father God, I thank you for your word that can dwell with us, that we can be that you can be the restorer of the path to dwell in. Do you see it, church? Do you see during this time that God wants to restore that very path within our hearts, that that word becomes alive, that that word becomes that permanent residence, that he's no longer just a visitor on Sundays or Wednesdays or when we dust off the Bible and find something that we might need for us or for someone else. No, he wants to be that living, that daily commune with you. That very word of God coming alive within us. Hallelujah. I feel his presence, church. I feel him tonight. I feel his very presence within my space, <laughs> within my heart. Glory be to God. And I pray for you tonight. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know where you're at. But regardless of where each and every one of us are in this place, he wants to be the repair of the breach. He wants to be the restorer of the path to dwell in. He wants to be the one, the intercessor for you on a daily basis. Church, I ask you, I ask you, is Christ just the visitor that comes by on occasion? Or is he taking up permanent residency with you? Is he there daily? Are you tripping over him? Glory be to God. At every turn, do you find him? At every place you look, do you hear him? He's there, church. He's walking this journey with us. He's picking us up when we don't even know where to stand. Glory be to God. He is our Savior, 
our restorer, our healer, our deliverer, hallelujah, and our soon coming king. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward for him to come. But if he waits one more minute or one more day or one more decade, I want him to be dwelling, dwelling and taking up residence in my soul, in my heart, in my being. And church, I pray the same for you tonight that you will find that place as he stands there tonight, knocking. Will you let him come in tonight? Will you let him sup with you tonight and be with you, hallelujah, on a daily basis? You say, Sister Lisa, I don't even know how to do that. Well, I can help you. I can help you get there. Oh, it's as easy as humbling yourself before him and say, Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me with your precious blood and come, Come and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Hallelujah. Oh, church, he's real. He's alive. He's risen. Oh, our living Savior forever. Glory be to the King of kings and the Lord of lords tonight. I love you, church. I love those that have tuned in tonight and those that might be watching a little later and, and catching us after a while. Let's pray. Let's pray together for Jesus to get a little closer than he was, to take up a little more space than he has before. Thank you. Thank you for joining tonight. I pray that word, the restore, hallelujah, of the paths to dwell in and the repair of the breach. I hope that finds a place in your heart today, that he can do that for all of us. Hallelujah. 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 He will heal our land. He will heal us. Let's humble ourselves now. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for this day that you have given us, this day that we have dwelt in God. And I pray, Lord, for each and every person, Lord, in the sound of my voice, that you will touch their very hearts and enlarge their hearts, Lord, to just envelop more of you, more of your word. May you give us the desires of our heart, God. Actually place that desire in our heart for you, for more of your word, for more of your presence, for more of your power to work through us, God. God, fill us in this time in this gap, in this breach that we find ourselves in, God. God, help us to make more room for you tonight. Oh, if there is sick among us, God, heal them. Send your word and heal them tonight, Lord. Hallelujah, if there's one among us tonight that is lost or, or backslidden, God, I pray that you draw them unto you. Father, you said in your word, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Father God, draw by your spirit tonight. Draw by your presence. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that as they reach out to you in prayer, as they open their lives and open your book of life, that you will come in and dwell and sup with them, commune with them, fellowship with them, fill up the promises, God, in your word in their life. Fulfill every promise every prayer, every desire, every need meet tonight, God. I thank you. I thank you that we can come boldly before you tonight. And I thank you that as we join our faith, God, that it shall be done. God, you're in our midst. If, if you're gathered together, hallelujah, you're there. We're here in your name, Jesus. Be with us tonight, tomorrow, and always. God, we forsake not you, and we forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, even during this gap. God, help us to assemble. Assemble in our mind and our spirit, and especially with you. Dwell with us. Dwell with us, God. Make your abode a permanent resident. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, church. Have a wonderful night. Be blessed and tune in tomorrow night and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. And we'll see you hopefully at the drive-in church on Sunday. God bless. He is to be praised. Hallelujah. Bye-bye.